Today on Monkey and Mezzakine, it is question and answer Wednesday where I, the idiot, try to answer your questions to the best of my ability. Um, I am not a licensed trained professional, so therefore you can take my answers either way. You can take it on a good part or a bad part, but I try to be as honest and open as possible. If I don't know the answer, I will tell you flat out I do not know the answer. So anyway, if you have any questions and you want us to answer them for you, just go ahead and send it to monkey 50 mezzakeen at gmail.com and we will do the best that we can to answer your question. Um, some of my answers are opinionated, some of them are factual, and some of them are just some that I've researched or I have went and asked other professionals about. So therefore, anyway, let's start this day with a good cup of coffee like always. So I'm going to warm this up, going to let the dogs out as usual to let them run around, burn off some energy, and then we'll come back with a fun fact and then we'll get into the questions. Okay, so today's fun fact is, did you know that a dog's nose actually has an identifying mark on it? Just like a human's fingerprint or a footprint or anything like that, or a palm print, anything. A dog's nose, every dog has a different pattern on it. It has a very identifiable personal identification to it. So, um, I'm gonna try to make a video later about how to do your dog's nose print. <laughs> and it might take two people. So um, anyway, yeah, that's a new I, new way of identifying your dog if it gets lost, stolen, or whatnot. Um, it's just another way of identifying your dog because a dog's nose is their fingerprint. So that's the fun fact today. Okay, so take 30. Anyway, the question is, why do my dog's feet smell like tortilla chips or Fritos? And um, if I start laughing, I'm not laughing at the question and I'm not laughing at the person asking the question. It's just something that we as dog owners uh, have known for years and for new dog owners, it's kind of weird. But um, the simple answer is, and I'm not gonna get scientific, but I'll give you the basic and then you can go check it out if you want or talk to your vet, but it's just a bacteria yeast. It, it's all it is. It's not, it's not anything that's damaging or a health risk to your dog by any means, unless it's to a point to where it's so overwhelming that you know you're when you walk into your house you smell dog paw. So um, best thing to do is just kind of wash your dog's feet off, you know, a couple times a week or once a week or whatnot. And um, usually the if they're out playing in the grass, they usually get rid of it. But it also has to do with their sweat glands and their paw pads and stuff. And just stuff in between the wedges of their toes. So right there in the webbing. So it's it's nothing bad. And this is the part where I keep cracking myself up on. But I just can't imagine seeing people just laying around sniffing their dog's feet. It's just the weirdest thing to me. I mean, some people do it, I guess. But anyway, that is the simple, basic honest answer right there. It's just a bacteria and a yeast build up in between the webbings of their toes and you can just wash it off simply with just using a washcloth or something like that. It should not affect you in any way. I've never heard of a person having to take any kind of <laughs> medical procedures for a bacteria yeast nose infection from dog paws. So um, not saying that it couldn't happen. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a professional doctor, so I couldn't <laughs> tell you that, but I've never heard of it. So anyway, my suggestion is, is uh, just wash them off once a week and it should be fine. Um, like I said, if it's overwhelming, you might want to go to a bed or, you know, clean their feet more often. So anyway, that's the answer to that. Um, go to question two. Okay, so the second question, I'm just going to boil it down into a... So, um, the question was, should I turn my neighbor in for animal abuse? And then they gave you a description of what was going on with the dog, and I didn't write it down, and I don't have it in front of me. So, pretty much, the dog's skinny. It doesn't ever look like it has any food outside. There's feces all over the, around its dog house. It's always outside. So, um, there's so many... So many ways to answer this and I don't know the right one. The, my personal opinion, first and foremost, my personal opinion, depending on what kind of relationship you have with your neighbor, um, if you have a really crappy neighbor and they're just 
that type of person. And the only way to get through to him is to actually call the cops and have the cops or animal shelter come out and check on this dog um, would probably be your best bet. It's anonymous, but guaranteed if you've had a combat with your neighbor, they're going to come after you right off the bat because they already know it's you. Um, if they're combative with everybody in the neighborhood, then you've got a pretty good chance of getting away without ever being known. So, um, um, if they're a good neighbor and they're easy to talk to, I would go over and ask them about the dog, ask them if it's okay or, you know, if there's something wrong with it or something like that. And then again, they just might be just trashy people, you know, that just don't care. So, um, this is one of those things that you have to work on and feel for yourself. I know that there's people out here watching this right now that have really good comments and I encourage everybody, if you have really good answers to this question, to throw them down there in the comment section to help these people out. Because it just really depends. My neighbors are really good neighbors. If I ever saw any of their animals that didn't look right, I would just go ask them about it straight up. Um, <clears throat> And everybody knows the difference between animal cruelty and a sick animal and just, you know. So it's really based on how you feel. If you have really crappy neighbors that are just crappy people all the way around and nobody in the neighborhood gets around along with them, best thing to do is anonymous phone call, get it taken care of. Um, if, you know, just like everybody, if you're, if you're a dog lover, an animal lover of any kind, and you see an animal that seems to be abused or malnutritioned or whatnot, you take it upon yourself to make sure that this dog gets a better home or a better life. And if these people are just crappy people, I would try to get that dog away from them as soon as possible. I, even if they knew who it was that turned them in, I'd still do it just to prove a point because these kind of people don't deserve to have a dog in the first place. So hopefully, you know, somebody gives you a really good answer in the comments. My opinion is turn them in. And it's just, if that dog is skinny, it doesn't look like it's food, it has any food and their species all the way around the dog pen or the house or whatever, and they're not taking care of this dog, then obviously they're abusing this animal and it needs to be taken away from them and put in a good place. So um, that's my answer for that. Question number three. So third and final question is directed at me, which is not nice whatsoever because I took it personally. So anyway, here's the question. And it was typed, or it was, yeah, it was typed because it was in an email in big, bold words, lettering, excuse me, that said, what is an earworm? <laughs> Question mark, exclamation point. So I will tell you what an earworm is. Hold on. Um, an earworm is a song that gets stuck in your head and you can't get rid of it. Kind of like... Coffee cup, coffee cup, oh coffee, coffee cup, coffee cup, coffee cup, oh coffee, coffee cup, coffee cup. Boom, 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 coffee cup, coffee cup. And that is an earworm, a song that is just stuck in your head all day long. So that's the answer to that question. Okay, so that was the answer to that. It's just a song or a phrase that gets stuck in your head and um, that's the best way to take care of it for me is just to make up, I guess, coffee words to a song and to scramble it up and get it out of my head. So that's that. Anyways, have a great day. I got little Miss Mezzakeen right here. Come here, come here. There you go. Got both of them today. So anyway, remember to always, always, always take care of your pups and have a great day.